So we set up the measuring points in two-point perspective in that last video. And so now let's actually use them. So here's what that looks like. And if none of this makes any sense, then you need to go back and watch those other videos. There's like over 25 of them. So let's um, let's draw something. We'll draw a little rectangular shape. We'll make it the corner of it. We'll make it one unit to the right of where the viewer is looking, which puts it right there. And then we have a line that's going to the left vanishing point. And then we have a line that's going to the right vanishing point. And if we wanted to make this side, let's make this five. So here's zero, right where it touches the picture plane. And we just count over one, two, three, four, five. And then go to the measuring point. So you want to use the left measuring point because you're measuring a line that goes to the left vanishing point. You want to think about what line you're measuring. If you're measuring a line that goes to the left vanishing point, you have to use the left measuring point. And this creates an isosceles triangle. This is, this is the isosceles triangle here. In one point perspective, that isosceles triangle was, was a right angled isosceles triangle. But in two-point perspective, it's still an isosceles triangle, but it's not a right-angled isosceles triangle. Here's um, this length, 5. That means this has to be 5 also. So these are the two legs of the triangle. And let's make the other side, I don't know, let's try, let's try 6. So we come over here, zero. Now we're measuring the line that goes to the right vanishing point. So you use the right measuring point. So we count over one, two, three, four, five, six. Then go to the measuring point. And you stop. Boy, it has a tangent with this arch that comes up to the measuring point. That is just a coincidence that it hits there. So um, it's really, hitting this purple line. Okay, so now this is six. So now we have a line that's five, we have a line that's six, and this is also a nice isosceles triangle that you're making there. You're all, when you're measuring something in perspective, you're always creating isosceles triangles. So this is not your rectangle. This is just the front of the rectangle. See the lines that come back here to these measuring points? Those are not there. Those are just tools that are used to measure lines that go to vanishing points. These lines are phantom lines. Think of them as being invisible. It's nice to put them in different colors so you don't get them confused with the lines that go to vanishing points. So um, you just want to ignore these. They, they have one purpose only, and it's to measure these, these lines. From here, if you're drawing the back of this rectangle, all the lines that belong to that physical thing, that physical box, they have to go to vanishing points. They will never go to measuring points. So it does look kind of funky, right? It doesn't quite look like a real rectangle. So if I go here and then there, oh, that looks so much better. Now it's laying flatter. And the ground doesn't look like the back of the boxes and it tilted up. So here's our, our rectangle. It's five by six. And the well, we could add some height to this. So vertical dimensions in two point perspective, they're exactly like one point perspective. Vertical lines are just vertical lines. There's no perspective to them. Vertical lines are parallel to the picture plane. So th they're not foreshortened, so you can just measure those with a ruler. So if I wanted this to be, um, let's make it two, too tall. I can put my ruler here, 
and come up two units, which is right there. So I could not put my ruler back here in this corner and go up two units because this is back in space. It's foreshortened. It's not going, it's going to be smaller than this. Things behind the picture plane get smaller and things that come out in front of the picture plane get bigger. Things that are at the picture plane are actual size. That's the only place you can use your ruler. So in this box, actually this was the only place I could put, just put down my ruler and measure a dimension of the box with my ruler. The two sides, I had to use a measuring point for those. So that, now from here, it is just connecting dots. We have a line going to the left vanishing point and a line going to the right vanishing point. Vertical lines, straight up and down. And left vanishing point right vanishing point just a little bit below the eye level so you're seeing a little bit of the top of this box so with this information we could also we could draw a one point perspective box in the scene this kind of this takes up a lot of that cone of vision though so um uh, well we'll add that maybe save that for another day where we can draw a bunch of objects that are going to different vanishing points and maybe stack things on top of other things. We want to be able to draw this at some place else than we're like right now it's touching the picture plane, the corner of it. That's kind of the softball question. But what what if this box was like way back here? What if there's one like back here? Like then measuring it becomes a little a little trickier because it, when it touches the picture plane and this, this here's your zero right there. But like what happens when it doesn't touch the picture plane? So we still have some other things to talk about, like um, angles. Maybe that's next before we draw these two point perspective objects in different places in space. We want to be able to draw out in front of the picture plane and behind the picture plane and stack things on top of each other, draw things that are up in the, up in the sky, floating in space or um, falling down from the sky. All of those kind of things we want to be able to do that. But maybe before all of that is um, just going back to this one. You now we have these, these objects that are have 90 degree corners to them. And we know that this line is parallel with the picture plane. So we know that this is a 90 degree angle and you know that's that's a 90 degree angle here. But what about this? Like what is that angle? And this blue one is a different angle. This is a different angle. What is it? What is that? And what is that? We know that this is 90. So maybe that'll be next time. We have to, um, these were just random vanishing points I put up on the horizon line. Not totally random because they have to be 90 degrees at the station point to make 90 degree corners here. So, but they, I wasn't really putting these in any real particular place. You know, I was just taking my triangle and, and plopping it down like that and making vanishing points that are, have 90 degree corners. But it would be nice to know what angle these objects are to the picture plane. So I, maybe that's next time.